This video is about the Bright Tangerine EOS C500 Mark II left field cage and their drumsticks titanium rods. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by B&H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Fujifilm, value from innovation. Atomos, better monitoring, better recording. And Nanlite, professional lighting solution. Welcome everybody to another Cinema 5D virtual show video. Today I am again talking to Rob from Bright Tangerine in Los Angeles. How are you Rob? I'm good, thank you very much. And uh, if I can remember to look at the camera in front of me and not the screen below me, um, you might see my eyes. So anyway, yeah. Uh, that's really our, new, that's our new reality. I'm also not looking at you, I'm looking at the camera, but that's, that's how, how the world is in 2020, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it is an interesting world we're in at the moment. Um, hopefully some good will come out the back of all of this. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, what, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about the uh, C500 Mark II 300 Mark III cage for Canon, uh, a 19mm and 15mm studio quick release bracket, and our drumsticks. All right, so the C300 Mark III and the C500 Mark II are extremely popular cameras, I think. Um, yeah. As we can already see, for the first time in a long time, Canon has kind of nailed it with their cinema line cameras, I think. Um, so. What, what what is your cage like? Yeah, well, so we've been working quite close uh, closely with Canon over the last couple of years. Uh, obviously, we made the original cage for the C500 Mark II, and uh, we were involved with uh, the original setup for that. And obviously, now with the same camera body for the C300 Mark III cage, um, obviously the uh, the cage is the same for both cameras, which is great because if you've got inventory, it just makes it a little bit easier for you know, keeping, if you have the two cameras, you can actually use the same cage on both. What we've done, uh, we originally made our first cage for Canon was a C200 cage. Uh, we've actually reduced the weight from that cage to this cage by about 30%. Um, considering they're almost identical, uh, taking that extra weight off using a, um, as much engineering as possible because every, every ounce or every gram of weight really is important when you're using these smaller form cap cameras. Uh, and what you can see from this one now is you've got uh, hard anodized aluminium or aluminium for people on this side of the country, or the world, sorry, um, it, which makes it extremely strong, extremely lightweight. Uh, we've given you a sliding top handle. I see with most other designs for cages, you get extremely long, long top handles, um, which actually increases the weight of the whole cage because you want to alter your balance very quickly when you go handheld. What we did, we went away from that system and we've given you actually a sliding top handle so you can move the top handle back and forth. So if you take it off the tripod very quickly, you can grab the handle, alter your balance, set the, set the lock and then you're shooting. Makes it really easy when you're, you're doing that transition period very quickly. Uh, the great little other design on this is our new patented open up system, which you've now integrated into other products. What you'll see is a, a lock system there that flips open once it gets to that page, you can actually set your balance on the uh, uh, dovetail, and it's an ARRI standard dovetail we actually give you inside the, the bracket, or this will fit onto any uh, ARRI standard. Positive thing about this is because not all ARRI standard, we call it ARRI standard because that's the, the common term for it, not all ARRI standard dovetails are exactly the same from every single company. And to make a quick release system um, where it will lock onto anybody's, because you know we, when you measure everybody's Dovetails, the standards are all slightly different and if you by making a quick release system to, to clamp onto the, the, the bracket The difficulties is because of that tolerances you don't get an exact lock So with our new open up system on the bottom we've used and it's a patented system It actually will lock onto anybody's ARRI standard So it doesn't make it if you're using it from uh, small rig, tilter, wooden camera, whoever it'll lock very quickly and obviously you can see that once I've set this now into the slide, so you can select your balance, I have a second option, which is the best thing about this is you have a, a positive lock there, you have to release. And then what that does, it calls open up, you can snap and go. So I'm off the camera very, very quickly, or off the tripod very quickly, and then I'm handheld. And then the same thing again, if I'm going back onto the tripod, I'm back onto the tripod and I'm using the system. That's not just for tripods, you can always say, also say, for um, if you were on a, on a um, 
a, a shoulder rig off, you want to take the shoulder rig off, uh, it removes the, the, the need for a, a VCT plate or an additional plate that you have on, you know, it's all expense and it's all an additional weight. So it makes it quick and easy to go from transition very quickly. Very cool. I mean, obviously the, the C300 Mark III and the C500 Mark II are cameras that only come with a screen, with a touch screen. It doesn't have an EVF. Uh, in the other video that we already did, um, we talked about your new EVF holder. I guess this is something that is compatible with this cage? Yes, it is compatible. Um, obviously, really compatible with um, everybody's cages because you've got the option to put uh, 15 mil rods on the front. You can attach this to the 15 mil rods very quickly. It's just a slide on, and like I said in the other video, it's a, it's a one button or one screw will lock all three axes. Uh, you've got an ARRI standard dovetail on the end of the EVF bracket, and like I said, that's a suspension system or suppression system. So when you undo this, the whole EVF doesn't slop down onto the floor or slop out of the thing. You can actually tighten this up. You can actually set your bracket here, uh, set your position very quickly, and then it's one screw rather than doing the screw here, screw here, and then tighten up your uh, actual bracket on your EVF. Yeah, it's a constant problem with cameras. I think they're either made made for the shoulder or they're made to be kind of handheld. And because the this camera and the C500 Mark II and the C300 Mark III, they're both relatively small if you don't use the extension pack. Uh, but yeah. that means you kind of have to build it up so it works on your shoulder. So it's really important to have a proper EVF mount apart from a shoulder um, shoulder rig in general. Yeah, I mean, talking about shoulder rigs, we are actually developing uh, shoulder rigs and handles as well. Uh, and one of the things with these cameras as well, because they're, all, they're, they're boxy and they're not long like the older cameras, you know, you're very easily, you can, you know, you can raise the height of your camera off your shoulder, make it difficult to use. So the, um, the shoulder pad and the grips and stuff we are coming out with are going to help keep it as low profile and as close to your, you know, your shoulder and your eyes you really want. And obviously the, the next transition was to take it onto the, the uh, 19 and 15 mil studio brackets. And you've got the same, same sort of design where you can, you know, very easily snap on and off the camera. And you can see here, you know, we've took every single small pocket out here possible to reduce the weight when we've machined it. I mean, it's machined from one block of aluminium. And even these little small pockets take every little gram or ounce off and uh, trying to make the, the weight as light as possible. So you're not adding, you know, that additional 19 mil weight. You know, everybody gets like it's 19 mil, so it's extremely heavy. Last but not least, uh, you also got some new 19 mil rods there. Yeah, uh, we've got, uh, we actually brought these out, uh, launched these early last year um, or middle of last year. They're sterling titanium, uh, 19 and 15 mil rods of all the lengths and sizes, the standard sizes you can get up to 18, 18 inch. Is a 19 mil rod, and I think everybody I've ever given these 19 and 15 mil rods to, um, I've all gone, wow. The first thing they've done when you pass them the hand in the hand is gone, wow, this is weird. It's it's they're extremely strong, they're thin walled. Um, we've got a lifetime warranty on the under these on the normal use, and you can think about every every piece of weight you put out in front of the camera, it has to be counterbalanced on the back somewhere, and just doing something extremely simple like making an extremely strong and extremely lightweight rod. It all makes a difference to the, the person that's carrying or using the camera. Well, I think it's amazing that you guys are really focusing on making stuff lightweight because that's not true for every rig manufacturer. And we all know, like every can, camera operator knows that this yeah. at the end of the day is the most important thing. I mean, it's there's so many rather not even bad shoulder rigs out there like usage wise but they many of them are just too heavy and i think uh, there has not been enough emphasis on making stuff lighter and uh, i think it's great that you guys are focusing on this and as you said i mean especially rods you know like very often i see people using relatively lightweight uh, rigs but they end up using the cheapest rods and they're just super heavy because they are made out of steel um and yeah, yeah. i mean there have been other or companies making fiber. rods from from uh, carbon fiber which I don't think it makes a lot of sense because they can break easily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a rod, but you know, if you compare this to a carbon fiber rod, there's almost zero flex on this. So you've got the same sort of zero flex as you would get in a triple line steel rod without the weight. Thanks everybody for watching and stay tuned to Cinema 5D for more news about cool new products and also a lot of interesting talks with filmmakers like the guys from Pride Tangerine. We're actually trying to, uh, you know, talk to people 
that are locked up at home, uh, it's actually a good chance to get a lot of very, very talented DPs all around the world in front of the camera to talk about their work. Uh, so stay tuned for that as well. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks.